Hello everyone, thumbs up! Welcome to DWP, Drawing with Paolo. Uh, today we're going to be learning all about perspective. So what that is, is trying to make something flat, like on a horizon line, look deep. So as if we're seeing deeply into the page. We'll try two points, and then so one point over here, one point over here, and then we'll use perspective lines, and we can try three points as well later on. So one at the top, two on either side, maybe one at the bottom, we'll see. So Let's grab our fantastic pen here and then we'll start with drawing a horizon line. So perspective with one point, so one point perspective. We'll draw our horizon line here with a point in the middle. This point is on the horizon line. So this is the horizon line. And then this is our one point perspective. That means that every line must come from that single point and radiate away from there, right? So one point perspective. And so what we'll do is, for example, we can draw here a bicycle a wheel or spokes, for example, that come from the center and radiate away. And so every object we're going to draw is going to, deter, is going to uh, send its lines towards that center point. For example, if, uh, and of course these lines would be pointed, they wouldn't have to be straight lines like that, and we can erase these as we go. So for example, if I were to draw a street here, and or, or train tracks, for example. They need to go all the way to that center point. So I'll have like a little bit of a thickness here that I'll add like that, and they all go to that center point. If I want to draw a fence and create all the fence posts, well, they'd need to have a certain line here to show the thickness of that border. And then I can draw each line representing the post. So every vertical line will be totally straight up and down. But as you can see, I'm making the posts thinner and thinner as I'm approaching the uh, perspective point. So all the way to the edge, all the way to the end over there, getting smaller and smaller as we go, but following the uh, perspective line. So we can draw another line here for the thickness of the posts. So it'll be our fence lines, and then we can pull these horizontally. These need to match the horizon line. The horizontal line, so horizontal lines and vertical lines will remain as they are, vertical and horizontal. But every, <coughs> pardon me, I have a little bit of a cold today. Every other line will have to go straight to the horizon line. So here we got the thickness of the top of the post like that, and then the thickness to the back of the post like that. If we were to draw, let's say, a truck in this street. So we need to imagine a cube here, or a, re or a rectangle, but now it's a 3D rectangle. So we draw, let's say, this cube, which is the back of the truck, or the front of the truck, let's say. This will be the front of the truck. And then we'll have these lines following the perspective lines all the way to my point, right? And then we need to draw the cab at the front of the truck, which is another cube and the cube lines need to follow the perspective line, like this. So every top and bottom line, or top and bottom surface, 2D surface, needs to follow the perspective lines. And we'll erase the lines we don't need here, getting rid of some of this stuff. Now I'm not gonna draw super fancy today, I really just want you to understand what perspectives are all about, perspective lines. So this uh, vehicle will seem pretty square. And that's okay, you know, you can curve Whatever corner there is there, you can curve those, and that doesn't really matter. You can make it smoother and more realistic, but for the time being, we'll keep this super simple and, and to show you perspective drawing, essentially, as, you know, best as I can show it. By the way, you can follow me on Instagram, search for Drawing with Paolo, and uh, tap the little follow button there and enjoy seeing stuff that I do on a daily basis, as well as drawing, of course. Drawings of all kinds. Okay, so we'll put the wheels down here. Little rectangles here too. <coughs> that will fill in in black. And then what we can do is add a grill here at the front. And then I'll show you how you can draw buildings. We'll draw buildings on the left side here of this drawing. And so <coughs> the building's facade will be uh, vertical. All, all the lines need to be vertical, but then the top and bottom lines need to go to the perspective point. Okay, just like this truck. Okay, so let's draw here a building straight line, see vertical line, which goes to the perspective point, like that, and that here now is the facade, right? So the facade needs to follow the perspective point. So 
There's the thickness. Thickness is horizontal, just like the horizon line. And I pull it all the way down. <clears throat> I might put another building here, another building facade like this. Needs to follow the horizon line. And we'll re-erase the lines that we don't need in there anymore. Now these horizon lines need, or pardon me, these perspective lines need to be very, very light so that you can erase them easily, right? So follow the horizon line and we'll draw the height of that building and the bottom part of the building, how long this building actually is, and we'll erase that horizon line through there. We're not supposed to see it. Then we'll add another building back here so he'll be a little bit offset, just like that. And then you need to follow the horizon line for the top. And the same thing for the bottom. So top and bottom lines need to follow the horizon line. Or the perspective lines. I keep saying horizon. <laughs> I hope you get what I mean. So we'll erase these lines here. So essentially what we're doing is we're drawing in 3D and sending all that stuff into the background. All right? So we're creating a fake background or a fake depth to our our piece of paper is essentially just a two-dimensional shape, but we'll, with these perspective lines, we're making something look three-dimensional and making this piece of paper look deep. So kind of like when you're driving into a tunnel, there's only one point all the way to the back. And so let's say we were to draw a house here. This house is the same. The front needs to be to the perspective line like that, just like this. And then we've got the side of the building, which needs to follow the horizon line like that. Right, <clears throat> but the front, even if there's a point, uh, it doesn't need to follow uh, the perspective line anymore because it's kind of a triangle. But the door does, the top of the door and the bottoms of the door uh, need to follow the perspective line as well. So there you have it. That's, you know, something simple, drawing perspective with one point should be easy enough. Uh, does require practice. But let's try something else. Let's try two point perspective. So perspective in two points, horizon line once again, but in this case, instead of one point right in the middle, uh, see, let's say I want to have a, an object here. Well, I need to have two points, and this is the corner of my object right here. So, And they need to have each face of that object, so a square, for example, or, or a cube, needs to go to those perspective lines, to those uh, vanishing points. So we have vanishing points on the horizon. So this is my horizon line. It continues here. And this is point number one, for example, or the horizon line. And then this is point number one. Oh, broke my pencil. There, point number one. Point number two is over here. So everything we draw needs to be on the side. And every uh, face needs to go to one of these perspective uh, lines or the vanishing points. We call them vanishing points because everything we see vanishes on the horizon. Um, Let's say we see a road and it will vanish into that point. So here's my cube, and we can see that we start from the corner of the cube and that each face goes off to its relative point. So what we can do now is, once I erase these lines here, we're going to add a bit of realism and imagine that the light is coming from this side, and so from the right, we'll shade the left side of our object, which will give them a bit more rea re realism. And this is a... Uh, totally plain surface, so it's the same shading from top to bottom. Let's say there was a hole in this uh, cube here, let's say a window. Well, we see everything here is vertical, but then the top and bottom lines need to go to the uh, vanishing point. So we need to pull this one across, follow to the vanishing point, same thing here. All the way, perspective line, all the way to the vanishing point. So the top and bottom lines need to go that way, right? And then we can imagine this is the thickness of the, uh, the cube and it goes to the vanishing point as well. The top goes to the other side. All right. Now, okay, some will say, hey, this cube can't be this thin because look at that edge is so thick. <laughs> but it's all right. It doesn't matter. Well, it's just a drawing. So uh, it's to show you how we can actually draw details inside of these objects. They're fake objects. We can do whatever we want in our drawings, right? It doesn't have to mean that they can exist in reality. Oh, it's possible that this is a wall. Uh, and so it's thinner than the actual cube itself. So let's make another square object here. We'll pull these lines all the way to the uh, vanishing point and another vanishing point over here for this side of the, the object, just like our the first cube we did. And then it's easier to use a ruler. Eh? My lines are all crooked, so if you pull lines with a ruler, <laughs> it's much better. But, you know, I'm just doing this freehand. So maybe this object is like a letter L, for example. So the top of the L needs to go all the way to the vanishing point. Bottom as well, but every side line needs to be vertical. 
up and down. So I'll pull this nice black lines now. And this is the thickness, the, the height, the thickness again, the height, the thickness, and the bottom line. And then we can erase whatever we don't need in there. Unless your objects are transparent, in which case you can leave all that stuff in there. That's fine. Ooh, I can hear some of you out there saying, hey, this is complicated, Paolo. Yeah, it can appear complicated. You need practice. And, you know, I haven't uh, drawn with perspective lines in a while. So, you know, it's even complicated for me. But so let's say this top here, top of the letter L, needs to go through the perspective line like that. And so we need to draw that line there. And once again, because the cube in the back there is colored, we can color this letter L in the same fashion. Everything needs to kind of look the same, right? This side and this side are the same. So we'll color that stuff up. The light's coming this way. And we'll color all of this. Same shade, because it's one flat surface. No gradient required. You can if you want to. You know, it's your drawing, but more realistically. Now, if I were to draw a car, and I want to draw it flat on, right? Just make a square like this. This is the back of the car. It kind of doesn't work, because... Look, I have this side is heading that way, right? Each corner needs to head that way. But then uh, this side heads that way. That doesn't make any sense. Like you can't have a, a, uh, an object that is facing us directly in this type of drawing. So we need to make sure if I put this, how thick my car is, and uh, see these, these things don't work. They don't go into proper, proper direction. If I were to split this in half and try to make this object work, it doesn't work. So I need to make sure I'm on a corner. So my vehicle needs to be on the corner, uh, just like every other object in this drawing. <clears throat> so I need to erase those flat lines here. We're going to start over a little bit. So the vehicle needs to also be uh, on the corner of our, of our point of view for this per these per perspective lines to work. So. If I draw the back end here and the top line over here, so and the squared top of like this, see, same perspective line all the way this way, and then this line goes all the way that way. So whatever is on the right side needs to go to the left perspective point, and whatever is on the right side, uh, left side needs to go to the right side. If that makes any sense whatsoever, so let's color this in, just like the other objects here, and you can see that the objects are closer to us. We can see. Uh, the top more. And whatever's farther from us, uh, we can see less of the top. And that's perspective for you. So we're kind of floating up in the air. So let's try now a uh, three-point perspective. Our horizon line, we'll play to, uh, place it higher this time. And we'll put our two uh, vanishing points on the edges over here. And we can add another one, either at the top or one at the bottom. We'll place one at the bottom for now, because I want to make it look like we're kind of high in the air. And so we can see objects from above. And so this is point one, <clears throat> point two over here. This point two and point three down here. And of course, the hor horizontal line is the horizon line. H-O-R, horizon. Okay, and that's the, ver uh, the horizontal line. Now that's where, the, that's where land and air uh, kind of split, right? So this object, once again, is the corner of the object. And the front corner is going to my first point. Then my, facade, my sides go all the way to the vanishing points. But now there is no line which is vertical. These lines must go to the third vanishing point. You can see now my rectangle or my cube is totally perspectived. <laughs> That's not a, it's not a verb. But you can see now there's no vertical line. There shouldn't be any vertical lines other than the horizon line and whatever line is equal to that one. Okay, not so much equal, but parallel, right? So if my cube was a little bit higher, a little bit taller, then would be even or parallel to the horizon line, and therefore it would be totally straight line as well. It's okay. This is my cube. We can see we can see it. We're looking at it from the top, and so I can actually create a whole cityscape along this line with different varying size of buildings. Uh, if I had put my perspective point at the top, then it would be like I was looking at the buildings from the bottom, right? And also varying your horizon line height will make your vantage point different. So I'll color the same side as we've been doing throughout this video. If you are left-handed, then you may want to color the right side, you know, just to keep your drawing clean and uh, not smudging everything. All right. So let's say there's another part of the building over here, and there's a little bit of a gap between those two. Once again, all the way to this vanishing point, and then this one too, all the way to that vanishing point. 
Not bad, eh? Without a ruler, I'm, I'm doing a pretty good job. These lines are pretty straight. Okay, we'll leave a little bit of, of a thickness here. And then, now we need to do the thickness here. So back here, all the way to that vanishing point. And this one too, all the way to that one. And then we'll color this all nice and black in there. Because, you know, the light doesn't reach that portion of the building, a floating building. Maybe there's a beam in the middle there somewhere holding this stuff together, or maybe it's just floating. You know, it doesn't really matter. It's our world. We do what we want with it. All right, we'll put in a window in here. So once again, vanishing point at the bottom. We'll determine the width of the window, <coughs> or I should say the angle of the window. And then the top needs to go to the uh, second vanishing point over here. And the top of this one to the first vanishing point, like that. See, whatever's on the left side needs to go to the first vanishing point. And whatever's on the right side goes to the second vanishing point. And look at that, we got our windows in our building. So this is three point perspective. This is more complicated than two points. Looks like I need to reload here. I'm running out of uh, lead, so I'll just slide this back in there. I love these things. They're way faster than having to sharpen just a few little dabs here with my thumb. And hey, we're ready to draw again. No need for sharpening. Very, very quick. I'll erase this portion here. Um, should be a little bit brighter if, if there's a through and through, but I'll color in this side because it's the same side as my uh, left side of the cube there. Same face, I should say. All right, maybe we can see there's a little, there's another point of the building up here. And we can, it's above our point of view, so we can see underneath this one. And how does that work? Well, follow the perspective points. Look, so all my perspective points lead to where I want them to go. And so now I can draw the bottom of this shape that you'll see happen all of a sudden. It's not the best way to start, <laughs> but uh, you'll get the idea, you'll get the drift. I'll color this in real quick, nice and dark underneath there. And then draw the thickness of the top. And that's that. Essentially, you know, I just made three-point perspective. You can draw additional buildings this way. Uh, play around with where the horizon line is, where your points are. Um, and, you know, that's how you draw 3D uh, and in perspective. So the next drawings we'll, we'll do will be based upon these theories of using one point, two point, three point perspective. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. Hey, guys, I'm trying to hit 100,000 viewers, uh, followers. So, hey, if you like this video, click subscribe. And it's been a pleasure to be playing with you uh, here on Drawing with Paolo. We'll see you next time on DWP.